Are you new to keyboard and mouse? Do you want to get better at it? Then this video is for you. Hey, I'm Ifiklis and this week I challenged myself to try keyboard and mouse. In today's video, I'll be going over my week progression on keyboard and mouse along with answering all your questions in this video with tips and advice from not only myself but experts as well. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is day one of keyboard and mouse. Now, as the clip goes on, I will be talking over this. And basically, as y'all can see, my movement is decent, I, but I'm mostly not sliding, I'm not diving, I'm misclicking. Uh, when it comes to my aim, it is everywhere. It's like if I just picked up the controller and just started turning my thumbsticks. Um, I was struggling with the recoil and just overall, I was getting my butt handed to me. 24 7 and i knew if i gave up now i wouldn't basically be able to get better so i kept trying and trying and then trying now this short little clip right here is on day two i'm not gonna put the full thing but on day two i did start seeing a little bit of improvement you can see that my reaction time was like spot on but due to me still being new to it, I did not pull the trigger or ADS. Day five of mouse and keyboard. As you can see, we are on shipment and the movement is better than it was on day one. Um, the movement is still a little sluggish in a way for myself, but that is because even though I'm still new to it and everything like that, and you'll also notice it in day seven that um, I'm not as confident as I am on controller to push these fights and everything like that. So I do struggle to keep going and stuff like that. But the aim is better and the recoil is better as well. Um, as you can see, not only is my aim a little better, but also the flicks. I do miss occasionally um, with the flicks due to over flicking, under flicking, and so on. Last day of keyboard and mouse. I'm no longer misclicking, kinda. <laughs> I'm no longer misclicking, but my aim has gotten a lot better. My movement has improved a lot. I'm more sliding. I'm a little bit of diving, but mostly sliding. I'm jumping, I'm mantling, I'm doing all this and that. Uh, the aim is still shaky, but is much improved. It's more improved than it was on day one and a bit of day five. Now on to the questions. Now, a lot of people have been bombarding content creators, streamers for as long as you can possibly think of that play mouse and keyboard on what is your sense? How did you get so good? Uh, how do you know he was there? And then they start bombarding you with so many questions to the point where it gets overwhelming. Questions will be answered by um, the homie Numpster. If y'all haven't, if y'all don't know who he is, he's an insane mouse keyboard player. Um, his channel will be linked down below in the descriptions uh, with his Twitch and his YouTube. So, getting into the questions, I asked Numpster uh, about nine to twenty. Uh, nine to ten questions in total. So starting off with number one, I asked him, how do you think someone can find their own sense? Uh, Numster ended up replying with, finding your sensitivity is going to depend on a variety of things. How big your mouse pad is, how much space do you have, what you're playing, etc. If you are brand new to keyboard and mouse, I would recommend you figure out what your uh, centimeters slash um, 360 is. And then he sends a link, uh, which will be after this. I will show the links. Um, plug in your DPI and in-game sensitivity and see where you are at. For beginners, I think being around 30 centimeters out of 360 is a great starting point. And depending how comfortable you are, you can either slow that down or speed up your sense. So the first question we did was, how do you think someone can find their own sense? So as you can see here, this was Numster's answer and also provided the link. Now all links and websites used in this video will be linked down below. Moving on. 
As you click the link, you are met with this page where you can put your DPI, in-game sense, and also your game that you play. Note, some of these don't work for some reason, but the rest do. For example, let's say your DPI is 800. Let's say you play Fortnite and your in-game sense is 6.50. This will be your sense. Uh, this will be your centimeters. So going on to question number two, how long do you think it takes to fully get the keybinds down? Numster responded with getting keybinds down for any game doesn't take too long, honestly. If you play often, you should get most keybinds within a couple of sessions. I find that actually very true um, because as y'all saw from the video, I started on day one, I was bodish, I was very body in a way and all that, but by day, by day five, I was in there, I was moving, sliding a little bit here and there, same thing with day seven. I asked him, what helpful information could you give someone that just is barely starting out on keyboard and mouse? Um, he goes on to his reply to, if you are just starting out on keyboard and mouse, don't be afraid to try out different DPIs slash sensitivities in game. Find out where you are comfortable and maybe even play some slower paced games to get the feel of it. I find that actually very helpful because I ended up playing somewhat of a fast type game such as like Call of Duty and you know with the state it is now Call of Duty is like very slow but so I pushed myself to play fast but to practice I did uh, some Roblox games like Bad Business I played Minecraft to slow it down get the gist of it and the hang of it so it really did help me out a lot went on to ask him is there always room for improvement once you get you got the basics and everything down he goes on to say the beauty about keyboard and mouse is that there is always room to improve aiming wise, movement wise, and reaction time, and etc. That is very heart well spoken, just for the simple fact that you can be constantly playing keyboard and mouse, and if you're not looking to improve, you won't improve, right? Like, take a look at default. Default started off playing some R6, probably some other games, but I know him from the R6 days and you know it just went from there he's been playing cod and it's like immaculate as numpster when it comes to movement on any game do you believe it comes naturally or do you also have to practice it he goes to say movement depends on the game like apex for example has some high level movement that will have to be practiced before actually used in a pub match games like call of duty don't have high level movement and therefore don't need to be practiced on that is so well spoken because a lot of people have been exposed on the Apex community, exposed for using config files and everything like that. And if y'all don't know what config files are, it's basically, it's like a strike pack for controllers, but basically you press one button and it drops the frame rate of your frame. It drops your frames for like a, a brief minute. So you could constantly, instantly um, hit super glides, and just any other type of movements, uh, super glides, um, meme strafing, and anything like that. Now, this question right here has been asked like a lot uh, in people's comment sections, uh, streams, and anything like that, and especially on Twitter too, saying um, different mice, uh, mouse pads make a difference. He says, from my experience, yes, different mouse pads will make the world of make the world of a difference. Not only mouse pads, but buying aftermarket skates for your mouse on top of it. Going from a cheap cloth pad to a sky pad, for example, was the biggest change and then be and then buying core pads for my sky pad was another huge change. There are plenty of options out there to choose from. It is important, however, that you get a mouse pad that is going to help you out in the game you mainly played. Do your research. Now when it comes to that um he is right because there is a lot of mouse pads from what i heard there is like four maybe three different mouse pads there is your um your glass pads which basically is more for like kind of like fast pace they have cloth ones that are hybrids so it's um good for control like a control pad they call them control pad another question that has been asked by a lot of people is 
how do you select the right mouse? Now, he goes to say that selecting the right mouse is all down to personal preference. I try to aim towards, um, oh my god, he put a big word, um, ambidextrous mice with a lightweight. Okay, okay, see, I got that, I got that. Uh, the G Pro Super Light uh, is a safe shape. Uh, for most individuals, yes, it's a bit expensive, but the mouse is great build overall. Now, have you seen a lot of your favorite streamers? Um, they do have the GPX Superlight, which is Logitech's best mice so far. Um, and it's also like very lightweight. You could also get people to customize it, not from the paint jobs, but also like the internals to fix up the battery, change it up a little. If you do want to do that, I will have a link down below. Another great question is, uh, should people work on crosshair placement? Numster replied with uh, saying 100% work, uh, you should 100% work on crosshair placement, no matter the game. Having good crosshair placement will already have you winning a lot of your fights. You don't want to be aiming at the floor when someone comes around the corner because you already lost the fight. Now, that is actually a great um thing to say because have you seen people like default strafe numster um cx robin they will tell you the same thing that your crosshair placement is your top notch thing but crosshair placement is the best thing if y'all have seen my controller plays and everything like that my crosshair placement is always mid chest to upper head um when i'm playing apex legends it's the same way because of the simple fact if i get the wingman i shoot like three shots I'm aiming for the chest because I know f because one of those shots are going to hit the head. So that's that's my, you know, that's my thing. SBM hit reg, I do, and they will tell you as well to always work on your crosshair placement to aim for mid chest and upper head. Now, y'all see mine somewhat lower mid chest occasionally, but that's because I'm so um, used to people laying down or crouched in like certain games such as R6 or anything like that. So I'm aiming low, but I'm also aiming close to where their head should be. So always work on that, and you will be getting your aim on par with other people if you keep practicing. Before we continue the video and everything, I do want to show this brief little clip that I got uh, from CX Robin with permission <laughs> of him explaining default crosshair placement and just crosshair placement in general since we are on the topic and everything. So we're going to let that play and then I'll continue the video. Crosshair placement where he always puts his crosshair is upper chest to head. That's the area he's always aiming for because he knows that if he's hitting headshots and you are hitting leg shots, he's going to win the gunfight 99% of the time. Unless you're playing Warzone for some reason, some reason feet shot sometimes does more than headshots. But if you know, you know. Now, another one I was shown by Sore Hollow was this neat one for those who play Apex on keyboard and mouse. First, you'll want to go to Google and type in Apex Legends Calculator and go down and click this link where you'll be met with this screen where you can change your DPI, resolution, FOV such as in-game configuration and degrees. And lastly, your in-game sense along with your ADS multiplier. So let's go ahead and put mine in. So I do 800 DPI and seven cents, only on Apex though. And here you can see my actual cents for not only my hit fire, but for my one times, two times, and every other site within the game. And if you wanna see more in-depth version, scroll down and click this option here and choose, let's say uh, hit fire and it will give you a more in-depth version of what your hip fire is and will be. Now, this last advice slash tip that I'm going to give you guys is very like useful. It's very useful and it's very helpful. And the main one is just to watch and analyze other people that play your thing. So let's say you want to get better at Call of Duty with controller. Okay, you're going to go watch Joe Scump. You're going to go watch all these people that play controller, how they play. Don't copy their sense. Find your own sense that fits you because what works out for somebody else might not work for you. If you want to work 
if you want to try to get better at keyboard and mouse for Call of Duty, you would want to watch Strafe, Default, CX Robin, Numster. You want to go watch these people to get better at keyboard and mouse, see what they are doing correctly, see like their content, because they do have content that shows how to get better at it and everything like that. If you're playing 2019 controller or keyboard and mouse, I don't really watch 2019 content, but I do know if you are still struggling to slide cancel in 2019, they have videos for that. If you need a video for that, I'll link it down below on how to slide cancel. Lastly, if you're playing Apex Legends on controller and you want to get better at it, watch Extensies, watch How, Imperial How, who recently swapped to controller. If you want to watch keyboard and mouse, be sure to check out Asu and Timmy and see how they play, how they maneuver, and how they do things with their keyboard and mouse. Like the more you analyze people uh, that play certain things like keyboard and mouse or play controller, um, really affects how you play as well. Me, I always play controller, but all I, all the people I watch mostly are keyboard and mouse players, such as Numster, CX Robin, Ethan. Uh, strafe and all of them i watch them i love their content love what they do and i try to do keyboard and mouse myself day one y'all saw it it was horrendous by day seven to day five i was going crazy right i didn't do nothing too crazy but it went crazy so the more practice you do it into the um the input that you want to play on such as keyboard and mouse or controller practice 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 right there's no shortcuts to getting better or anything like that i promise you if you guys did enjoy this video be sure to like comment and subscribe and if you are new to keyboard and mouse or you're getting you're trying to get better i do hope this video helped you but until next time i'll catch you in the next one peace